Boom, boom, boom. Well, well. I boom, boom, boom. Well, well. <laughs> What's up, Rippers? Today we're gonna talk about the latest from GoPro, the new Boom Mount. <laughs> All right, before we dive in deep, take a look at the chapter markers to jump to the section of the video you're most interested in, or hey, maybe even just watch the whole thing. <laughs> to help orient you, I'm first gonna talk about how we got to needing this mount in the first place. Then we're gonna take a close-up look, followed by putting it through its paces in several different scenarios. And lastly, we're gonna answer the question, do you really need the GoPro boom mount? Okay, so how did we get to the point of needing this mount? We all purchased a GoPro, then soon realized that we either needed to film something that was naturally epic, or mount the camera in an epic location, or a combo of both, to actually get noticed, or to have the video go viral. Ever since the early days of GoPro, we unknowingly subscribed to all the GoPro ecosystems of mount and accessories. Of course, there were the classic, iconic mounts like the chesty and head strap that enabled such unique perspectives. But we all remember unboxing our first GoPro and looking at all the little plastic bits and asking ourselves, how the heck do these little pieces of plastic make my GoPro work? Then realizing that the quick release buckles, thumb screws, plastic articulating extension arms were all the new fiddly bits we needed to understand and master before we could actually go pro. Even through the glory days of GoPro, we saw more and more unique mounts and perspectives pop up where we had to really take a step back and ask, how the heck did they get that shot? We turned to Reddit, YouTube, and the forums to learn that the helmet twirly mount, along with other wild mounts like the quadcopter drone, would produce the wild perspectives that we had never seen before. At the time, we had no idea these mounts would have the impact that they did on the cinematography industry at large. The extended length GoPro arm, or the narwhal mount, was the secret sauce for the media team to obtaining such epic POV and unique angles. It seemed so special because it made people ask, how is the camera mounted to get that angle? The first time I saw a wingsuit base jump with the perspective of the jumper's face completely changed how I viewed the video. I could understand the level of focus and adrenaline coming from the athlete. I wasn't just watching the footage, I was experiencing the footage. I remember being so jacked on adrenaline after watching YouTube, I would death scroll social media looking for that next video that would make my palms sweaty after watching it vicariously. If you couldn't tell, it's been a while since I've been this excited about a new mount from GoPro. It's part accessory and part mount. It's more like an extension or addition to an existing mount to push the perspective even further. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here it is. It's got two carbon fiber extension poles with a bunch of really fancy looking stuff on here. Um, no thumb screws. We're actually working with these Allen keys that you uh, need this Allen wrench to be able to tighten and loosen. There are hex screws that come with the boom that allow you to attach the arms together, the camera to the arms, and also the camera to the new ball joint head. Separately, there are inset screws that allow the arms to be rotated and secured at any angle. There are notch marks at every 90 degrees to help with alignment. You can really tighten down these screws a lot tighter with the Allen key comparatively to the thumb screw that you normally use. It's not the first time we have seen these hex screws and Allen wrenches from GoPro. They were originally introduced with the Pro Handlebar Seat Post Mount, which is a metal Pro version of the Handlebar Seat Post Pole Mount that's currently available on GoPro.com. The idea being more secure and tight connection between camera and mount in high vibration scenarios. The boom pole is more of a matte finish, contrasting with the shiny black GoPro logo. On either end, you have the traditional GoPro two finger to three finger connection attachment. But yeah, instead of your standard short, long, mini, or micro GoPro thumb screw, we have yet another set of hex screws to keep track of. The benefit of these being when you tighten them down, it becomes extremely solid. I wonder if they'll be selling these screws as an independent skew for when they get lost or take a swim. 
They have engineered it so that when it opens up all the way, it locks in place and doesn't allow it to go any further than perfectly in line and flat. This is a key design detail that becomes important in high vibration scenarios. I'll show some examples later in the video. So of course they've added this little Allen wrench holder that clips onto the carbon fiber tube. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it every single time, but I guess it is convenient to keep all of the fiddly bits in place, but probably convenient for low intensity activities and for portability. The boom mount comes in three different configurations. All three configurations come with the baseline items, which include two carbon fiber arms, the ball joint head, adhesive mounts, and the additional small accessories. The boom plus bar mount includes the same baseline items, but comes with the additional pro handlebar seat post pole mount and its accessories like the multiple rubber inserts for ranging size tubes. And separately, the boom plus auto mount comes with the baseline items, along with a complete suction cup mount and all of its accoutrement. In the past, we've had to use these uh, twist 90 degree plastic extensions with the acorn nuts and the small thumb screws, and you'd have to link a bunch of them together to create extensions. Looked kind of ridiculous at times. Then GoPro also introduced this miniature ball joint buckle and eventually the jam mount, which they use for instruments. And the jam mount actually shares some design characteristics, uh, a little shorter than this boom arm and not quite carbon fiber. I think they took a lot of lessons learned from the jam mount and paid it forward to this boom mount. I mean, take a look at the head itself. Instead of being an articulated ball joint head, the jam mount had like a rotating head with the three fingers and a short tiny thumb screw that they invented just for it. But this is like an evolved version, it seems. So let's talk GoPro Max and 360 for a second. I've done plenty of videos in the past showing the ideal way to mount 360 cameras to get the perfect stitch. I was skeptical of this slight offset that you can see when the Max is attached and aligned, but after taking out for some tests, I'm noticing that the seam or the stitch quality looks comparable to other mounts that are mounted more precisely in the zero point or nadir of the camera. I put it through a couple of different helmet scenarios and separately mounted it to the handlebars of my bike and I'm not seeing any noticeable difference in stitch quality even with mount optimization turned on and off using GoPro Player to reframe and export clips. Whatever, I'll take it. I've been using and recommending the peg mounts for 360 simply because the mount is directly in the zero point or the nadir of the camera, thus allowing for the most optimum stitch. With the three different lengths of peg extensions, you can mount and adjust your camera even in compact situations. They use Phillips screws rather than hex screws, which I find more universal and easy to find at hardware stores. They use locking washers, which increase the number of loose parts, but peg mounts allow you to attach and triangulate the extensions at any mounting hole along the metal lengths. Boom also allows you to triangulate the mount to make for a more rigid connection, ultimately reducing vibrations when mounted at lengths. Boom comes with a triangulation adapter, which is yet another plastic bit to keep track of, but its design allows for you to connect it at any spot along the carbon fiber arm. This is convenient compared to the standardized holes of the peg mounts. This is critical for extending the GoPro far enough to get that new scroll stopping perspective. Keep in mind that boom only comes with two arms. So in these examples where you're seeing me use four arms, it's actually two boom mounts, each sold separately. It's actually pretty clever how the plastic adapter slides freely, but when pinched to thread the fingers, it grips the boom so tightly that it becomes virtually impossible to wiggle during use. I tried it in several scenarios and I'm thoroughly impressed with the rigidity and lack of movement. This paired with hyper smooth stabilization setting in the camera makes for an awesome image. Let's spend the night together How until forever bum, 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 bum. It's critical to understand that this is simply an extension arm that can be applied to any mount. 
For example, the adhesive mounts included with the base boom are the mounts, and the boom poles are the extension arms that create the new unique perspective. Similarly, the pro handlebar seat post mount is the mount from the bike boom combo, and the boom arms are still the extension arms that get the camera further out, creating unique perspective. Take this concept one step further to realize that you can attach the boom extension arms to pretty much any GoPro mount to get an extra oomph of magic in every shot. All right, so cons. I think the length is great, but they don't really fit in any of the standard GoPro cases that I normally put all my gear in, like the KC, the soft case, or the new cases that come with the cameras when they ship. It does, however, fit in the GoPro fanny pack, which is a plus. Another con would be all the fiddly bits. This is not a mount I would recommend to beginners simply because it's for more specific shots that require more involved setups. The fact that there are small hex screws and an Allen wrench, not to mention this little Allen wrench storage clip tool thing, it just adds to the ever-growing list of inventory of GoPro accessories and things. Instead of just connecting your GoPro to a handler and hitting record, this boom mount requires alignment, setup, double checking, locking down all the pivot points, and then dealing with a more involved mount for the sake of your shot, which somewhat touches on maybe another con, which is distraction from your actual activity. I feel that the boom is more for people who are producing and curating shots rather than an athlete who wants the least invasive mount and camera possible when allowing them to focus on the sport or activity at hand. Maybe not in every case, but all in all, you gotta know what you're getting yourself into. This mount is somewhat involved, but can produce some of the most epic of epic shots. Just depends on the person. All right, let's talk about price. The basic configuration, boom adhesive mounts, retails for $69.99. The boom plus bar mount, which includes everything from the base package, but also includes the metal pro handlebar seat post mount, retails for $99.99. And lastly, boom plus suction mount, retails for $109.99, and that comes with the base boom package along with one suction cut mount. Keep in mind that when I was filming the car, I used two suction cut mounts and four boom poles, which would require purchasing two complete boom plus suction mounts. Are these prices a good value? $69.99 may be somewhat steep for a beginner user who may be spending their allowance on a fun after-school hobby, but for prosumers and professionals, this seems pretty reasonable compared to other similar mounts in the category. There is value in the boom plus bar mount configuration, seeing as though the metal pro handlebar seat post mount is no longer available on GoPro.com and normally goes for $40 or $50 elsewhere. The additional $30 added onto the baseline $69.99 makes this a good value. The boom plus suction mount, on the other hand, is priced laterally. $69 plus the cost of the standalone suction cup, which by itself is $39, makes for no savings when you bundle. Keep in mind that these prices are at the time of me filming this video and they're subject to change. GoPro oftentimes runs sales on their website and offers discounts to their subscribers. That's maybe a topic for a different video though. Now who is this mount for? Kind of just touched on it, but as for people who are looking to really produce a shot or are after a certain angle, uh, I really don't think it's for beginners, but I think it's for people who have used their GoPro before and want a little bit more out of it. I'm sure you get a feeling one way or another just watching this video. Just be true to yourself. Just be true to yourself. Do you really want it? Is it for you? So should you buy Boom? You gotta ask yourself that question. After watching this video, are you stoked enough to get it? So am I gonna buy Boom? Heck yeah! This thing is rad, and I'm into producing unique shots that normies would consider way too much work for them to execute. Is that too harsh? Let me know in the comments how you're gonna use the GoPro Boom mount or if you have any questions about the mount or anything you saw in this video. Wanted to give a special thanks to V-Flat and the Duo Boards. These things are absolutely sick. Oh, and go check out our official tutorial videos on GoPro Tips YouTube channel, link down in the description. And while you're scrolling around down there, maybe consider a like, or heck, maybe even subscribe if you want more of this type of content in your life. But hey, if that's not for you, that's cool too. Until next time, friends. Peace.
spend the night together, together forever. Boom, 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 boom. I want to do boom, boom. Let's spend the night together, together.